1946, 56 volunteers took part in a study to test a new painkiller called Trivaricane. On each subject, one index finger was covered in the new painkiller, while the other remained untouched. Then, both were squeezed in painful clamps. The subjects reported that the treated finger hurt less than the untreated one. This shouldn't be surprising, except Trivaricane wasn't actually a painkiller, just a fake concoction with no pain-easing properties at all. What made the students so sure this dummy drug had worked? The answer lies in the placebo effect, an unexplained phenomenon wherein drugs, treatments, and therapies that aren't supposed to have an effect and are often fake miraculously make people feel better.
Now, to make you guys learn more about our main topic, we will provide you an explanation from a story, Romeo and Juliet. As you already have learned about Romeo and Juliet in the last semester, Romeo and Juliet is a tricky story written by William Shakespeare. It is about two young star-crossed lovers whose deaths ultimately reconcile their feuding families. Talking about the death scene of the story, Juliet visits Freya Loren for help and he offers her a potion that will put her into a dead-like coma for two and forty hours. And the Freya promises to send a messenger to inform Romeo of the plan and he can join her when she awakens. But that didn't go as his plans. Romeo didn't know about Freya Roren's plane because the messenger wasn't able to reach him. Balthazar, Romeo's await, who brings the news of Juliet's apparent death to Romeo. At first, Romeo didn't believe that Juliet was dead, although he was broken heart, and that the reason why he decided to check on Juliet. In this moment, we can say that if he wants to know is it real or not, he needs to find out the truth. When he arrived the capillate crib, he saw Juliet was lying on in the crib. So he assumed that the information that he got was true. After he learned about the truth, he immediately makes his decision. Everything has its own reason. That's why Romeo died without learning the absolute truth behind the Juliet deaths. As we all know, this is a plan of Freya Loren and Juliet to make a fake death and then Juliet and Romeo can live together if this go as planned. To judge how good or bad something that you think that is true based on the information you have is not enough. In simple case such as Romeo and Juliet's story we studied earlier, on Romeo's character, judging to what extent reasons support his conclusion, to what extent the inferences are justified, is relatively straightforward. So, in short, there are always many reasons behind the scenes. So, before making assumption and evaluation inferences, we need to be patient, open-minded, and reasonable. So, here are some of the photos which related to our topic. As you can see in the photos, everyone see what you appear to be. Few really know what you are. Now, it is the end of my part. Let's move on to another part. Thank you. In real life scenarios, we can see assumptions can be applied on many cases. One of them had just happened recently, which is our example of assumptions. As the media and other country have been in curiosity as the North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un has missed the celebration for the nation's founder a few weeks ago. And as the curiosity continues, many people have assumed that the leader is currently in a bad health condition which has led him not being able to join the parent or even worse, the leader is, has died. Many people also pointed out that the leader is in fear of getting infected with the novel coronavirus as the virus is just broke out recently. Another example of assumption is that many people are burning down the 5G towers in the United Kingdom and United States of America after seeing the news article saying the towers may have links to the new normal coronavirus as the tower is created in China and the virus is also had its first outbreak in China. Later studies have shown that 
the towers have no connection to the spreading of the novel coronavirus. In this case, it can be assumed that not all news sources are reliable as, as the internet continues to grow, the spreading of fake news can grow restlessly. So, it is recommended that one should have many sources of information which is reliable and can be trusted. Hello everyone, for this section, I am going to present to you an overview of how much these skills can be applied to both study text and real life. Knowing how to evaluate inference is an essential skill in making sound judgment and come to a logical as well as sensible conclusions. However, it is not easy to actually evaluate inference. Some inferences are relatively straightforward, but in real life situations, this may not always be the case, as there are hidden assumptions implicitly lurking at the back. An inference can sometimes be very subjective. Despite these challenges, being able to evaluate how justified is the inference that one is looking at is really important due to many reasons. Primarily, evaluating inference can allow us to understand the study text on a broader perspective. As we may already know, making inference from the literary text means reading between the line and picking up clues to come to a conclusion of what the author means and want to imply. However, imagine if you are making a subjective inference or ignore the implicit assumption given by the author. This will give you a different understanding from what the author meant to convey. For example, in our study text, Romeo and Juliet, we may infer that the author wanted to portray a beautiful love story between a, a pair of star-crossed lovers. However, if we take time to evaluate other relevant considerations, such as the fact that Romeo and Juliet only met once before they promised to marry one another, as well as the fact that they selfishly ignored the ongoing conflicts between both families, perhaps we can infer that the author wanted to show that impulsiveness can lead to tragedy which is entirely different from the inference that we first drawn. Therefore, knowing how to evaluate inference can give you insights to what kind of different messages the author wanted to convey, which is crucial when looking at literary text. Secondly, evaluating inference is also particularly important to our day-to-day -day life because by judging whether one inference is good or bad will affect the reasoning of the argument. Once you evaluate whether the reasoning is strong or not, this will affect the conclusion you make. For instance, unemployment can be solved by having all unemployed people to willingly and vigorously seek out jobs. From this statement, we can infer that anyone with willingness to find a job will have one. However, this statement fails to take other arguments into consideration, such as the fact that unemployment may be caused by economic recessions or the fact that the person isn't qualified enough. Thus, the inference is flawed. One needs other solution to solve the issue of unemployment. Therefore, evaluating inference is important when we try to seek out solutions or reach a conclusions that allow us to make sound decisions. Overall, from this study, we can see that evaluating inference is a skill that should be learned by everyone to avoid making subjective and ignoring conclusions. Through this discussion, we have also come to learn that by knowing how to evaluate inference, we can broaden our perspective when reading literature. And it also helps us to see things from another standpoint so that we can make sound decisions in our daily life. So now let's move on to the last part of our presentation, is the conclusion. To reasonably evaluate the inference, what you need 